the evening of the second day of the World Academic Society of Medical Qigong Conference, 2019. So in the evening of the second day, um, we had a special session and it was organized uh, primarily as a, a meeting of sorts between our group from New Zealand and also um, the, the master's students from the Beijing Chinese Medicine University. It turned into a little bit more than that. Uh, a few of the other conference participants came along as well and also students from, let's see, from Jiangxi University came along, and there were also some academic staff from at least one other university, maybe two. There was one from a university in Henan, and I think there might have been one from a university in Shanghai as well, who came along and joined in our discussion together. And... There were some, some questions and uh, going in both directions. It was an opportunity for, for us to ask the, both the professors and the masters and also PhD students about what they're working on and, and things like that and, and how things were at the universities. Um, and then also for them to ask us some things about our experience with Qigong and uh, Qigong in New Zealand and so actually some aspects of uh, treating people with Qigong as well because um, again these are like master's students and PhD students they generally didn't actually ask that question that would have been interesting but it looked to me like they didn't really have a clinical practice history behind them yet they've just been at school and and maybe they've done some in school at university but they you know they don't have years of clinical practice um, yet so they had a few questions about that as well and um, as so something that was interesting um, so one someone asked a question about how the courses are structured um, at the universities and one of the professors answered and and and, and he talked broadly about the universities throughout China. And I, sometimes it's hard, a few things get a little bit maybe missed out in the translation or so on, or, or something, you know, gets, slips past really quick. But I gather from what he said that there are only, I think it was three universities, he said, that actually teach like a full degree program or a full major in Qigong. Um, and all of the universities at least teach some optional classes in Qigong, but they're very much an elective, and there's only a very few of them. Again, I think it was three um, that actually have a full, uh, you know, a major in Qigong. Um, and he also talked about that, hopefully, uh, but, and some of the students talked about this as well, because they understand that Qigong really is the basis of Chinese medicine, that that surely Qigong actually came before the other parts of Chinese medicine because awareness of the meridians and so on comes from Qigong and then out of that comes things like acupuncture and some of the theories around Tui Na, Moxibustion, even the action of the herbs and so on. So um, that, you know, it was their hope that they, they think that uh, over time this will spread and eventually all of the universities will have a full Qigong program. But that's certainly not the case at the moment, it's just a few of them. Uh, so even in China, it's not that easy to find a good uh, Qigong education in terms of, well, certainly through the academic system. Um, part of what we talked about as well was two of the students had prepared a little presentation about the research that they're working on. So I'll show you some, some videos of that and, and tell you a little bit about some of the research that they're doing. So one of the um, research projects that the students are doing um, is a, a project essentially using meditation. Um, they had, I can't remember the term that they specifically used for it, but a type of meditation where essentially you you draw yourself into a positive environment so you imagine things first you just imagine seeing it and then you involve other senses to uh, it, with your mind immerse yourself 
into this positive environment and then measuring um, how this affects your emotions and well essentially your energy um, and they had a few uh, good creative ways that they had come up with to measure the emotions because they they didn't talk about any qualitative measures actually they um, they were all quantitative and uh, one of the things that they're using is EEG um, and they're also using fMRI and heart rate variability um, and so the the heart rate variability and the fMRI a little bit more straightforward um, but using the EEG they they actually did some baseline tests to to compare what happens in different emotional states with the EEG and then applied it across to their study uh, which they you know so if I have people use this meditation technique um, and then compare the results uh, f you know with their control group um, so that was cool to see them using quantitative uh, measurement tools um, also that they recognize that elsewhere in the world perhaps this might be called more just a mindfulness study or a meditation study but meditation is part of qigong so it fits with them academically as part of qigong which of course is completely correct all right so overall um I thought their their research project looks like it's really well designed so hopefully that is going to turn out a good solid piece of mindfulness slash qigong research when they when they complete it um, then so another project that another group was working on is essentially they're trying to measure qi this is a thorny issue the way they presented this it did strike me that they certainly the way they were first talking about it, that they were making the classic mistake that so many researchers have made when they're doing this where they're looking for the mystical magical chi um, and because uh, they're talking about and finally prove once and for all that chi exists it's really not that hard to prove chi exists if you don't think that you have to find something mystical and magical to show that it exists if you accept that uh, there may be some mystical magical things but a lot of the things to do with qi are pretty ordinary types of energy that can be measured quite readily so it did seem like they were going down that track a little bit um, they are working with uh, three different measurement tools they they're using uh, infrared so heat heat imaging they're using um, EEG again and then they're using uh, high frequency measurement of high frequency radiation so in the tera or oh, I want to say terabyte but it's not ter terahertz yeah uh, high high frequency um, and and using this to measure um, I guess emitted chi and so that's cool they're using multiple measures um, but again it, it was framed almost as if they're looking for something magical um, but on a positive note I did talk to a couple of those master's students afterwards and we talked a little bit more about it and in that conversation they were clear that chi wasn't something that they could measure you know just with one thing that that she actually encompassed many different things and that measuring these different parts wasn't necessarily measuring the whole but still valuable so um, sometimes the way things are worded you know particularly for an academic study it's quite important how you word something um, to give a clear impression and maybe that's something they'll fine-tune as they continue to work on it because it did seem certainly for some of the students that they did have a more solid grounded understanding behind what they were doing so something else that was pretty cool um, talking afterwards with uh, some of the some of the professors is they're actually quite keen to you know if the if the right opportunity comes together to work cooperatively on some research projects I don't know if that'll mean there's anything necessarily uh, any opportunities for me to work on anything it is one of my longer term ambitions that I've had um, I, th I think that there's a real place for solid qigong research and I have some ideas of some studies that I think would be really fascinating to carry out 
um, could be really cool to work with one of these universities if the opportunity was there. Um, but, but who knows? It sounds like maybe that's a conceivable thing. Um, and, you know, several of the members of our group were talking to them about, about this. No, no definite solid plans or anything, but as a, as a possibility. And it's, it sounds like something that um, they're very interested in if, um, if something were to come out of that. So overall, really cool session. Um, great to get a little bit of insight into the inner workings of a Qigong department within a Chinese medicine university uh, here in China. So I hope you've enjoyed this vlog. Again, um, there's one more day of the conference, only one more. There's some more interesting things to happen, I am sure. So I look forward to seeing you on the next one.